So the next topic of our discussion is adult polycystic kidney disease. So adult polycystic kidney disease is characterized by the formation of multiple expanding cysts in both the kidneys, which results in destruction of the renal parenchyma and ultimately renal failure. So adult polycystic kidney disease constitutes almost 5 to 10 percent of the cases of end stage renal diseases. The inheritance pattern of the disease is autosomal dominant and it has a slow onset and becomes significant in 4th to 5th decade of the life. So the genes involved in the formation of the disease include PKD1 gene and PKD2 gene. So PKD1 gene encodes a specific protein known as polycystin 1 protein. The polycystin 1 protein is present in the tubular epithelium of the distal nephrons and forms cilia which extend into the lumen of the tubules from the apical surface of tubular epithelium and it also forms the domains that extend from cell to cell and cell to matrix interactions. In almost 85% of the cases of adult polycystic kidney disease, PKD1 gene is mutated. The next is PKD2 gene which encodes a specific protein known as polycystin 2 protein. Polycystin 2 protein is present in all segments of the renal tubules unlike PKD1 protein. So polycystin 2 protein forms calcium permeable cation channels which cause the influx of calcium in healthy tubular epithelium. So to understand the pathogenesis of the disease it is important to understand the normal functioning of polycystin proteins. So polycystin 1 and polycystin 2 proteins together form a complex which includes intercellular junctions, cilia and focal adhesions. So intercellular junctions monitor the forces between the adjacent cells and the cilia arise from the centrosome and apical surface of the tubular epithelium and projects into the lumen. These cilia are sensitive to the changes of fluid flow inside the tubules. The focal adhesions monitor the attachment of the epithelial cells to the extracellular matrix. So all these components maintain the integrity and functioning of the normal tubular epithelium. So the fluid flow inside the renal tubules causes the cilia to move and open the calcium channels resulting in increased calcium influx inside the tubular epithelial cells. So they regulate the calcium flow in the cells. So increased calcium influx performs two functions. The first is that they inhibit the proliferation of tubular epithelial cells and they maintain the polarity of the tubular epithelial cells. Let's move on towards the pathogenesis. So the loss of PKD genes results in malfunctioning of the polycystin complex which results in decreased calcium influx inside the cells and ultimately loss of the inhibitory signals to proliferation. So there is increased proliferation of tubular epithelial cells. Moreover, the defective polycystin complex also decreases the cell to cell and cell to matrix adhesions which causes the epithelial cells to be attached to the other cells as well as to the matrix in a very loose manner. So this loose attachment of the cells and increased proliferation of epithelial cells results in the formation of cysts. These cysts are typically round and are filled with the fluid. Moreover, they are present, present in both the kidneys since this is a genetic disease and they are multiple. The cysts are typically formed from the tubular epithelium. Coming on towards the morphology, the gross picture reveals increased size of the kidneys due to presence of multiple cysts. The increased size makes the kidneys palpable in the abdomen. The cysts are present in the medulla as well as in the cortex. So this is the kidney affected by the adult polycystic kidney disease. As you can see here, there are multiple cysts present on the surface of the kidney. These cysts are present in the, in the cortical region as well as in the medullary region. The cut section also reveals the formation of the cysts and the cysts are filled with the fluid. This fluid can be either turbid or it could be clear. The turbidity is due to presence of necrotic cells. Sometimes red blood cells are also present inside the cysts which make it hemorrhagic fluid. Hemorrhagic means tinted with blood. So this is the cut section of a kidney affected by adult polycystic kidney disease. You can see formation of multiple cysts. 
These cysts are present in the medullary region and there are cysts in the cortical region as well. Moreover, there is loss of the renal parenchyma which results in decreased function of the kidneys. The histological picture reveals multiple cysts which are lined by the tubular columnar epithelial cells. The presence of columnar epithelial cells reveals the origin of the cysts is from the tubular epithelium. So these are the columnar cells and the cysts are typically round and lined by the columnar epithelial cells. So the fluid can be either clear, it could be turbid due to presence of the necrotic tissues and often contain RBCs. The epithelial cells may project into the lumen forming polyps. So this is the cyst and inside of the cyst is lined by the columnar epithelium. So often these columnar epithelial cells form polyps which are projecting inside the cyst. So these polyps also contain columnar epithelial cells. Since the disease has a slow progression, it is asymptomatic in the start and then slowly progresses into end stage renal disease. The disease is characterized by the presence of flank pain, there could be hematuria and renal colic is also present sometimes due to formation of blood clots which are passed into the urine. The kidneys are typically enlarged due to formation of multiple cysts and are palpable in the abdomen. The palpation of these kidneys produce a dragging sensation. Proteinuria is often present and it is typically less than 2 grams per day. The disease is often associated with the other cystic lesions such as cysts in the liver and intracranial aneurysms. There is decreased renal functions and the diagnosis is established on the ultrasound and CT scan of the kidneys. There are certain accelerating factors that increase the progression of disease into the end stage renal disease. So the accelerating factors include the ethnicity, the disease progresses quickly to the end stage renal disease in black population and association with sickle cell trait. Hypertension also accelerates the progression of disease into end stage renal disease. The 40% of the cases of adult polycystic kidney disease are characterized to have cystic lesions in the liver. If you have any questions, do let us know in the comment section. Thank you.